Hi, this is Doug with Database by Doug on a video that's a viewer request on relational division. So my goal with this is to help people understand the concept, not necessarily to say that this is the best practice way of solving it or the most performant. There are many ways to achieve the, the relational division, but it is conceptually fairly difficult. So I wanted to come up with as simple or pared down an example as possible and so this is what I came up with. So I have this uh, schema that represents uh, a job application scenario where I have uh, jobs that have requirements of a certain skill set and a skill could be uh, required by many jobs. So here's the associative entity there. And then I have applicants that might have many skills and a skill that could be had by many applicants. And what we're going to eventually try to do is match up uh, the appropriate applicants with the appropriate jobs uh, based on the skills that they have. So I will make this schema along with the data that I've used available as a script in the comments below. So if you want to run this on your server, uh, you can do that. So um, just to get used to the data a little bit, here are my applicants. I've got four of them. And here are my skills. I've got four of those also. And notice that four uh, times four is 16. And if I execute a cross join on these two tables, I will get all possible combinations of applicant records and skill records. So a cross join is the Cartesian product of applicant records and skill records. And notice that there's no requirement that applicants match up with uh, skills based on a primary key, a foreign key, or anything like that. So there's no join condition. This is just the Cartesian product of these records. So um, remember that product is the result of multiplication. So in other words, I just did in a way, relational multiplication. I've multiplied all applicant records with all skill records. So in a algebra sense, I've done an A times B equals C. So C is the result of the cross join. A is applicants, B is skills. But if you remember your algebra, you could divide both sides of this formula by B or the skills. So I can say that the applicants would be the results of this divided by the skills. So in our context, that would be 16 of these uh, divided by four skills, and I would get four records back. So I'm going to do that. So this is uh, a common table expression that does exactly this. So notice that the, the common table expression is um, the cross product or the cross join of these two tables and it provides the applicant last name skill ID and skill name which is exactly what I did in the previous select statement and then when I select from this I am putting a requirement that the number of skills equals the count of the number of skills in the skill table so this so in a way I've uh, done nothing Right? I've uh, created all possible combinations of applicants and skills. I divided back out the skills and I came back with the applicants. So uh, I can rephrase that a little bit differently directly as a subquery where I'm doing the from statement to do, uh, I'm putting the subquery in the from statement. So um, the whole point of what I've done so far is just this idea that um, there's a set based or relational tabular equivalent of algebra uh, where I multiply things out and then I can divide them back out and come back with a result. So, um, however, this is all made up and it's made up with a cross join. So uh, what we're going to do um, is try to take this same thing and actually apply it to the situation where I actually have jobs that require skills and I have applicants with skills and I would like to match them up. So to keep this simple, I'm going to look at exactly one job and the skills needed for that job. So 
This job in particular is the software developer job and it requires both SQL and JavaScript. So you can see that this is the, the associative entity between job and skill. So in the diagram, this would be job, job, skill, and skill. And so this is my job requirement. Oops, sorry. This is my job requirement. So let's look at the applicants and the counterpart of applicants and what skills they have. So if I look at this a little bit, I can see that Klein has SQL and public speaking. Smith has just project management. Jones has SQL and JavaScript, which matches this particular job. And then I see Brown has a lot of skills and also happens to match on the skills for the software developer. So it looks like my viable candidates are Jones and Brown. And I'm going to do the same kind of logic where I have candidate skills and I have job skills. And if I break down candidates and skills into the two components, I could find that the candidates are kind of the job skills divided by the skills, right? So that's the, uh, an analogy for what we're about to try and, and figure out. So this analogy is not perfect. Of course, you know, an asterisk is not really a cross join. And, you know, what we have here is not made up records. They're actual records. And we do have to find some alignment. It's not a cross join. We have to, we have to make skills, uh, job skills and candidate skills align in some way. So um, we're going to solve this in the same manner as we did the count, uh, in the count manner as we did before. So just to walk through this a little bit, what I've got here is uh, I'm giving a, getting a count of how many skills an applicant has, but I'm restricting that so that their skills, the applicant skill, actually equals the appropriate job skill, right? So that uh, their count is restricted to only skills that satisfy this job. And this job is restricted to um, the software developer. So if I didn't have um, this having clause here and I ran this, what I would get is the list of or a count of how many matching skills each applicant has. So Klein has one matching skills. Jones and Brown have two matching skills. What I'd like to do is restrict it to two, and the reason I know it's two is because two is the number of skills for this job, right? So again, um, remember that this column is the number of matching skills, skills that match this job. So what I'm gonna do is put the having in there and say Jones and Brown are matching or good candidates because they have a count of matching skills equal to the number of skills required. So um, let's look at this in a more general sense. So here I've limited to just one job uh, for simplicity. But if I were to just look at all of the jobs and the required skills out there, and in this case I have two different jobs. One is a software developer that requires SQL and JavaScript. And the second is a business analyst that requires public speaking and project management. So notice these are disjoint. So for each of these, um, we'll use the same set of applicants. And uh, just to kind of look at the data ahead of time, I think Jones is still a good candidate, of course, for um, the programmer, software developer job. Uh, Brown is still a good candidate. Uh, I think that Brown is also, though, with completely different set of skills, um, a viable candidate for the uh, project manager position. Right? So I'm going to do the same kind of logic with the counts here. And here is a list. So I'm grouping this by both applicant and job and counting the number of matching skills. So Klein matches on one skill for the software developer job. Klein matches on one skill for the business analyst job. 
Smith matches on one skill for business analyst. Jones matches on two skills for software developer. Again, at this point, I don't really know that there are only two skills for software developer. And then um, Brown actually matches on two for software developer and for business analyst. So again, this is just um, you know counting up skills that match jobs. And this is the key part here, is that the applicant skill is equal to the job skill, and I'm only counting records where this is true. Now, if we wanted to limit this to, uh, now what I'd like to do is say, well, how many skills are necessary in total for software developer and business analyst? Now, I happen to know it's two for both of those, but we'd like this to be a calculated value, not a hard-coded value. Um, the trick to this is that when I compare a um, job and the applicant and the count, that that has to apply for the same job as the count. So this here is a correlated subquery. Notice that I'm joining back out to the job out here. So to execute that, what we see is that Jones actually has the same number of skills that match that job, and Brown actually has the same number of skills for both of these jobs. Now, um, this might be clear as a common table expression. It, it gets quite uh, lengthy, but I think that it's helpful to say that this is a job with skill count. So here's a certain job, here's the total number of skills that it needs for that job. And I'm going to join that into all of the other query that I have, right? And here I am combining the applicant and the job and counting up their applicable skills, again with this piece here. And I'm saying limit this list to only those ones that match up on the skill count. And of course, I'm joining that up so that the job IDs match. So here's the common table expression way of solving that. Now, hopefully you found this example uh, you know, helpful for understanding. Again, it's not a, it is fairly conceptually difficult. Here are a couple last comments. Uh, I've, I've presented this from an employer view, so applicants who match job requirements. But it really is exactly equivalent from an applicant point of view. So if, if I had an applicant seeking jobs that match their skills, this is the same problem. The exact same code applies. Second, I'm not showing the remainder of the division. So for example, um, you know, Brown actually has extra skills for each job. So um, what I'm saying and showing is that Brown matches the two skills necessary, but I'm not, I'm kind of hiding the situation that he actually has or she actually has extra skills. Um, the next thing is that this is not necessarily the most efficient way to do relational division. So I can't say this is the best in terms of performance. My goal here was to create an example to help understand relational division. So uh, realistically, anything, if you, if you wanted to do it in the fastest way, well, this would depend on many things, the data volume, the statistical distribution, indexes, schema, etc. cetera. Um, you would have to custom craft your uh, SQL for that situation and perhaps even uh, adjust schema or, you know, there are many strategies for performance. But there is no single, here is the fastest way to do relational division in all situations. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I know it's a little long and it's a little bit uh, advanced, but I hope it helped you understand relational uh, division. Thanks for watching.